Something nice about the Warhammer 40k factions is that they're all pretty goddamn spectacular in one way or the other. Like the Space Marines. I know some people look at this video and thought I hate the Space Marines, but I don't. They're badass super soldiers designed by a god and they're awesome. Humanity's finest through and through. Or the Eldar, the remnants of a dying species that once ruled the stars and are still a force to be reckoned with. The Orcs, the Tau, the Tyranids, everyone has something that makes them go above and beyond the average person. But you know what? Sometimes that's not what you want. There's an appeal unique to being the average Joe and Jane, the everyday men and women just doing their part to get by in the world. They're not particularly special, they don't have supreme plot armor, and they're not the best of the best in anything, really. But goddammit, they fight their damned hardest, and it's all the more special when they win because of it. When they show that just because some big bug monster is designed to be the ultimate killing machine doesn't mean that it's unbeatable. So are you interested in playing as the true essence of humanity? Do you enjoy when the regular people of the galaxy go against the worst it has to offer and tell it to stick it where the sun don't shine? And you my friend, you want the Imperial Guard. The Imperial Guard is what happens when you need more bodies than most planets have people to fight in your war effort. I wish I could give you a grand operatic backstory for these guys, but I can't. They're just people like you and me against the forces of hell and worse. The Solar Auxilia from 30k that would eventually become the Guard, while badass, were supposed to be secondary support units for the main force of the Space Marines. But you know what? All this makes them even more appealing. The average man performed so well even compared to the invincible Space Marines that the Imperium was like, shit man, make these guys the main force. And yeah, I know that part of the Guard coming into being was that the Imperium feared the Space Marines going rogue again, but at the end of the day, the Guard wouldn't have come into being if it couldn't be competent on its own. They're the badass dregs of humanity, and they fight horrors beyond time and space, and they win. At the end of the day, that's all the background you need. So why pick them? Well, like I said, every army in 40k has something special about them that makes them stand above the ordinary person. But what makes the guard special is that they don't really have anything like that. They're the everyday men and women who are forced to fight to live, and honestly, that's something that makes them entirely unique in the setting. I love the Eldar and Elves in general, but even the Guardians, the average Eldar forced to fight to defend their craft worlds, still aren't quite the same as the guard. Militia or not, they're still effectively immortal elves that have forever to learn how to fight and survive. But the guard is just humanity. You more than likely can never be a custodius, but you sure as shit could be a guardsman. I'm fucking diabetic and I could still probably be a guardsman. They'll take anyone. This makes them more relatable than anyone in the setting. You can relate to the space marines. You aren't a child super soldier fighting demons from hell as part of your job description, but you can be damn sure you can relate to the guy shitting himself behind a machine gun while mushrooms built for war tear your tanks in half. Whenever a guard book comes out, you can relate to just about every character in it. From Caiaphas Kane caught weight out of his depths in the worst of situations to Gaunt the Tanith first and only grimly persevering, there's no one in the guard that you can't connect to in some way. Even on the tabletop, there's something about knowing each of those minis on the field is just an average person forced to fight that makes them special. And it's all the more awesome when they do win because of this. When the Space Marines win, it's like, well yeah, of course they do, they're all Master Chief. But you throw an average guy against an army of four different Satans and he wins? Now that's something special. Whenever a member of the Guard does something amazing, it's even more awesome because of the universe he lives in. There's a group called the Kasserkin, which are the Cadian Guard Regiment's elite units to give the basics of it. One of them was either part of an Inquisitor's bodyguard or just happened to be nearby for whatever reason. And this motherfucker scared the Inquisitor. Keep in mind, this guy's in entire job is to deal with demons from hell on a regular basis and had fought against space marines in the thrall of one of the chaos gods. And this Kasserkin scared him. The Kasserkin also helped save the Inquisitor's life when a possessed guy lost control of the demon inside of him, what an edgy sentence, by jumping on top of it and stabbing it with a plain old knife. Space marines wish they could be that cool. Beyond them being exceptional in their normalcy, there's a guard army for just about everyone lore-wise. Do you want stereotypical Soviet Russian charges where the only strategy is clog the enemy guns with your bodies? Guard has you covered. Do you want actual Soviet tactics, where there's some serious brain power put into the war effort, it's just the casualties aren't avoided if they're the most efficient route to victory. Guard has you covered. World War One era trench warfare and unrelenting stoicism in the face of defeat? Of course the Guard has you covered. ODSTs? You know the Guard has those. The Guard also makes frequent use of heavy armor because tanks are awesome, thus making them one of the few factions in 40k to realize that actually, it turns out tactics and efficient use of your war machine is really effective. Instead of screaming some war cry and charging headfirst into a machine gun nest because the first part of becoming a space marine is removing your self-preservation instincts. Beyond that, the Guard is the faction for people who don't want to be on the losing side in the grand scheme of things. Now, from the amount of casualties the guard suffers, you might think I'm being a bit of an idiot here. And I am, because the guard suffers manpower losses like my pancreas suffered beta cell losses. But the thing is, unlike my pancreas, there will always be more guardsmen. The Imperial Guard is an army truly and strong, and it's only ever getting bigger because the Imperium requires planets to give a certain number of soldiers to the guard as a tith. 
Yes, I said tithe. Tithe, tithe, motherfuckers. Complain at me in Discord all you want. You can't untithe the word tithe. Anyways, sure, some individual armies like the Tanith first and only may be on a fixed lifespan, but the Guard as a whole isn't going anywhere no matter the losses. It doesn't matter who they're fighting, on a battle-by-battle -battle basis, they'll be equipped with almost equal numbers to whatever they fight at worst. There may be more Tyranids and Orcs than there are Guardsmen in total, but on a battle-by-battle -battle basis, they're on relatively equal footing. The Guard also has just straight up the most enjoyable books. I admit I'm probably biased because I've read more Guard books for 40k than anything else, but by god do I love them. The Gaunt books, Caiaphas Cain, I love and keep mentioning them because they're so fucking good. Interestingly, the guard is also closer to the moral good end of the spectrum as far as 40k goes. Now, I'm not saying it's a good guy faction, where everyone involved is just a big damn hero who's always riding out to save the day. They're part of the fascist, totalitarian hellscape that is the Imperium, and if you put them in, say, Star Wars, they'd look like total monsters. But because they're the average men and women fighting for their beliefs and more importantly survival, this gives them a bit more of a humane edge. Not great, because if I don't clarify, people get the wrong idea. But compared to super soldiers slaughtering thousands because they can, or the secret police nuking entire worlds, the guy screaming for the Emperor because it's all he knows in the face of certain death is kinda hard to hate on for being evil. Hell, depending on how awful you think the Imperium is, he may not even realize what a shithole he lives in, so you can add a little bit of culture-wide brainwashing to make him even more sympathetic. It's also fun to play against the Guard. It's hard to be mad at them because A, the Guard is a pretty respectable army to see on the tabletop, and B, you'll always score a decent amount of kills against a Guard army, so you'll never feel like it was a slaughter even if you lose. And with that foreshadowing of the guards' negatives, let's go to their tabletop positives. Remember those numbers I mentioned? Yeah, that reflects in their rules. You're gonna be having more troops on the field than most armies, depending on how you build your own. It's possible to lead more into the infantry side of things and have waves upon waves of disposable schmucks drown the enemy in bodies. Like I said before, with the potential exceptions of the Tyranids and the Orcs, the guard are always gonna outnumber people on the battlefield. And while one las gun might not be the best weapon, 100 of them is pretty damn good. So if you face the guard, don't think you're just gonna be getting free kills with zero effort against them. Is there an objective you really need to take? Well, your numbers have your back. Even if you go for more expensive stuff, compared to other armies, your stuff is still dirt cheap in point cost. You'll rarely be in a situation where you're desperately trying to fit one more unit in because you'll be just over the point limit by including it. You're very much a ranged army, so to get the most out of the guard, stay far away and shoot at the morons who think swords are good in the 41st millennium. That being said, if you have some ogrins on the field, then people are gonna regret going into the charge thinking they've got the game in the bag once they close the gap. Before a not ogre rips their commander in half anyways. Of course, you can lean more into a mechanized build as well. Tanks are plenty and each of them is pretty effective at its role. Sure, guard tanks might not be the best things in the game stat-wise, but as far as what you get for points, you can't really get anything better than the old Lehman Rust tank, named after the Primarch of the shittiest chapter ever. He's an alright guy though. Also, the Basilisk. Remember when everyone was shitting themselves over the Tau railgun? You know how that railgun had 72 inches of range? The Basilisk has a range of 240 inches. You were never not in Basilisk range. And while it doesn't hit nearly as hard as the railgun, it still packs a decent punch and can come in a unit of three. Horde armies will learn to fear the Basilisk. Valkyries can control the sky while the tanks hit them from below, and of course you have the mighty Bane Blade. Anything in front of it, you just, just assume it's not going to be there next turn. Just forget about it. But the true power of the guard comes from their flexibility. The vehicles they wield might not be the best in any particular role, but they're decent enough all-rounders. Sure, you aren't as tough as the Necrons, but you're tough enough for your point cost. Sure, you don't hit as hard as the Eldar, but once again, you're cheap enough that you can toss more tanks freely into the fray and they'll still perform very well. On top of that, when their vehicles are backed up properly by a force of infantry, there's very little on the battlefield the guard isn't able to do. Sure, your opponent could focus on wiping out your infantry and making sure you don't get any objectives, but that just means the firing line of basilisks in the background is going to mulch them, and if they focus all their effort on the vehicles, then they aren't capturing shit, and with the 500 lasguns pointed at them, one of those guardsmen is going to get a kill. You have a tool for every occasion. It may not be the best tool, but you have something that can get the job done alright, and sometimes that's all you need. Combine this with the buffs units like commissars can give to a unit, and you can get a level of synergy that makes anything the guard's path wish it was fighting something less terrible terrifying, like Tyranids. And if nothing else, the Guard are part of the Imperium. If there's one particular aspect of the Guard you find just isn't to your liking, ally with someone else and you can patch that hole right up. The reverse is also true. Any weaknesses in the Space Marines, Sororitas, or the Mechanicus can pretty easily be filled up by the Guard. Also, Knight Commander Pask. He's not as good as he used to be from my understanding of the rules, or at least he doesn't have nearly as many varied rules. But my advice, if you're ever playing against someone who hasn't played the Guard before, play Pask. They will quickly learn to target him first in the future, because if they don't, they're gonna watch their army turn into smoke. Oh, and Slime Arbo. Yeah, I had to mention the funny meme, man. Look at him. How could you not think he's badass? Overall, if you want a force of meat shields taking bolts for the big guns behind them, you want the guard. Wait a minute, haven't I heard that one before? But what sucks about the guard? Well, lore-wise, there's a few negatives to be wary of. On a grand scale, like I said, yeah, the guard is never going to be losing because there's trillions of the brass bald bastards. But in individual battles? Yeah, those casualty reports are going to be hard to read. Whenever the guard shows up to a fight, a whole lot of them are going to die. More so than usual for 40k. It gets rough out there for the humble guardsmen, I won't lie to you. What makes it worse for the 
the Guard is that if it's a big event where every faction is involved, that means the Space Marines are going to be involved, which means the ultimate glory is going to go to them, not the humble guardsmen on the ground. Expect a token mention along the lines of, while the Guard heroically died in droves to distract someone, the Space Marines went and did the important shit. The Guard are the grunts through and through, and the rolling lore is often to catch bullets with their faces so someone important doesn't have to. They also lose more than any other Imperial force, excepting perhaps the Sisters of Battle for what is almost certainly fetishistic reasons. Yeah, the Guard holding Katie until it was literally falling apart beneath them and then fighting just a little bit longer until they suffocated to death was undeniably badass. But at the end of the day, that's still a loss. Cadia blew up. Their job after all is to die gloriously until the big guns can take the credit for something. The guard get their purple heart and the space marines get a demigod back. Additionally, the guard gets the bottom of the barrel assignments compared to everyone else. Space marines and sisters of battle will be out purging demons while the guard is busy doing garrison duty. Now these lower key stories can make for very fun and enjoyable narratives so it isn't necessarily a flaw. But if you always want to be the center of attention then the guard might not be for you. Especially if by center of attention you don't mean directly in the middle of the enemy's attack path. Get used to being the meat shield, seriously I can't emphasize this one enough. Also as with every other faction, you get less lore than the space marines. Which means that while the guard has dozens of unique factions from Talarn to Krieg to Cadia to the Vestroyan Firstborn and more, they're not getting nearly as much attention as they should be. In fact, if it isn't Katakan, Cadia, or Kriegers, they probably aren't getting any attention. Have you ever heard of the Terex guard? I haven't before I started working on this video. They seem pretty cool, but their last update seems to be around 10 years before I was born. That's just about all I got for the narrative downsides, because in my opinion, the Guard are doing pretty well in that department, but they more than make up for it with their tabletop flaws. Do you think that their units are so cheap because they're just so cool that Games Workshop couldn't resist making them cheap? Not at all, they cost little because looking at them funny makes them explode. Point for point, the Guardsmen are good at everything from durability to damage. Purely looking at stats, however, yeah, they're gonna get obliterated on the battlefield. Anti-infantry weapons are gonna powderize your soldiers, anti-armor will do to your tanks with those hyper-realistic Minecraft mods due to a computer. What the? And with the exception of Ogrens, they aren't good in melee if you aren't buffing them with supporting units, and even then they aren't exactly great. Sure, the guard can take fire warriors or guardians in melee, but that scenario should never come up because the guard performs much better at range, and if an Eldar or Tau player is purposely putting those units into melee, then they need to find another army. The average guardsman also isn't particularly brave either, because he's been assigned a squirt gun and t-shirt and told to go kill God. I mean, I can't blame him, I'd run from these battles the first chance I fucking got. Just something to keep in mind when you're in the thick of things. If you specialize in either a wave of conscripts or a wave of tanks, your opponent will not only know exactly what to play to counteract this, but will more than likely be able to do so with relative ease, given that their units are some of the weakest in the game compared to other factions. Now, while I did mention that it's possible for you to counteract this by having certain units act as firing magnets while others do an important job elsewhere, it's entirely possible for this to fail spectacularly. The guard works best when all parts of it are performing in tandem, and when one part breaks, the entire thing can come crashing down. Imagine this scenario. A guard player is fighting an Eldar player. The guard player could have the commissars and priests giving the correct bust for the situation, the firing line of artillery is perfectly set and the foot soldiers are where they need to be for maximum efficiency. The guard player can very much roll the Eldar player over here, but here's the thing. While a balanced guard army can be the most effective, it's also easy to bring to a halt once things stop going so well and the right units are taken out. If the Eldar player takes down your characters with rangers, sends fire dragons to destroy the artillery, and manages to get some wraith guard into melee range with the guardsmen, you're in deep shit. Even if only one of those things goes off successfully, the guard player may still very well be crippled for the rest of the game as it doesn't have what it needs to properly perform. And because the Eldar units are so specialized, they're perfectly suited to taking down your key units if they play the right ones. This isn't just the Eldar though, every faction is going to have something able to cause this scenario to happen if they get the chance. If you play guard, you need to know two things. One, what's best to throw into line of fire to take hits for something else, and two, at some point you're gonna have to figure out which vital unit is the least vital one to sacrifice. You need to play defensively with your infantry to win if you don't want to take casualties for the big guns, and no matter what, a lot of people are gonna die here. The Baneblade is tough, but the avatar of a war god is going to cleave it in half if you don't make sure there's enough cat and fodder in front of it. Beyond rules, well, your guardsmen are cheap in Warhammer points. In real life money, prepare to take out a loan or ten if you want to play these guys. Let's look at their start collecting box. Honestly, I think for what it gives you, it's one of the best ones available, maybe even the best. With the exception of maybe the Commissar, you can always use more of the units that are in it. The problem is, you're going to need to buy at least five of them for a functioning guard force. Mechanize their infantry, numbers is the name of the game here. You can't buy a few boxes of these guys like with the Space Marines or Custodes and call it a day. You need a lot of everything. And this only gets worse the more you look at it. Want that unit of three basilisks I mentioned earlier? 200 bucks after taxes, please and thank you. This also means a lot of time spent assembling models, which means a lot of time spent painting and transporting models. The guard is a very intensive army to play, arguably more so off the tabletop than on it. And a lot of these models are so wonderfully out of date, their vehicles are fine, I'll grant. Even a World War I tank designed by stapling a turret to the top of a tractor can age well. And the standard Cadians are okay. They're not an atrocity to look at, but you can definitely tell they're aging, especially compared to Primaris Marines with the new Eldar units. Maybe not as bad as 
the Tyranids are, but it's close. But pretty much all the characters are not only aging, but in fine caster metal. And to really see an example of the Guardsmen aging poorly, look at the Catacans. This is painful to look at. Bring back the Red Terror, please, I beg of you. I'm not entirely certain this man isn't a gene stealer in disguise, and this is supposed to be an army of Rambos. I know Sylvester Stallone can make some pretty funny faces sometimes, but for the love of God, he never looked like this. And you know how I mentioned that in the lore there's all sorts of armies that the guard has? Well, on the tabletop, they can go suck a fire hose because you don't get them. You get Catacans and Cadians, and I guess if you really want to be generous, the Tempestus Scions. Now, I'm sure some bright soul in the comments will be going, oh, quit whining, you've got Krieg too. And yeah, Krieg's there, with a single image infantry kit for 60 bucks. Or you can get 16 horses, the finest Krieg has to offer, off the Forge World website for $500, or 15 infantrymen and 3 artillery pieces for $600. Let me just check, and yep, Eldar Titan's gonna be less than $400. Let me just make sure you're understanding this, a Titan is less than some horses. And there used to be some pretty solid diversity in the guard like Talarn, but unfortunately those don't sell like Space Marines and Starship Troopers do, so go fuck yourself, valued customer. I mean, what else can I say? If you want some variety in your guard army, you have three options. Find out-of-date models, from secondhand sellers, get really good at kit bashing and risk Games Workshop executing you for bringing in a micrometer of third party material, or spend your life savings on resin. And there's the basics of the guard for you an army with a lot of character to it that can perform very well despite being made of squishy humans, but keep in mind that it's by no means invulnerable. When played well, you can bring the full force of Germany in the first half of World War II to the table. When played poorly, you can bring the full force route of Germany in the second half of World War II to the table. But you'll be having a fun time doing it no matter what. Thank you, of course, to my channel members. You are the guard into my Imperium, generously sacrificing your wallet so that I may continue on my quest for glory and YouTube infamy. Thank you all for watching and take care out there. I'm not gonna play it because I don't want to steal it, but go listen to XX by Stringstormer if you somehow haven't yet. It's a seriously awesome song about the guard proving once again that they're the best human faction in 40k, which makes it all the more funny that it was written for Remy Down Under Gaming's modern armor clusterfucks. In fact, go watch that too. Why are you still here? Are you expecting a joke? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm running out of funny for the script. I want to bang Carl Franz, Marathi's hot, I'm diabetic. There, I hit all the major notes. Nope, go away, I'm busy painting ogres. <laughs>